Luke 7, verse number 11. We're going to read down to verse number 17. Luke 7, verse number 11 says, And it came to pass that the day after they went into a city called Nain, that many of his disciples went with him and much people. And when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much of the people was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, uh, or buyer, and they that bear him stood still and said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. There came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God hath visited his people. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about. I just want us to, uh, verse number 17 is our, our text this morning. It says, and this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about. I just want us to think a little bit here. It's the last Sunday of the year. Um, and just reflect a little bit here at Victory Baptist Church. The title of the message is this. What are they saying about us? What are they saying about us? And uh, let's pray. Lord, I pray you please help us now, I pray. Holy Spirit, please guide, direct. Give me what it is you want me to give to your people. Lord, please, I pray. Please, Holy Spirit, fill me now. Change us, please, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Here we have the account of Jesus. Uh, and this is the day after that Jesus had healed the centurion servant by his word only. Remember the, the story there and, and where Jesus was going to go to his servants, the servant's house. And he said, look, you know what? You, all, you don't have to come. You just, you just say the word. I know he could be healed. And Jesus did. And the, and the servant was healed. This is the next day now. Jesus enters the city of Nain. Uh, as he and his disciples and, uh, uh, and much people enter into the city, a, f a funeral procession passes, uh, passes them, all right? A man, in, uh, the only son of his mother, who happened to be, uh, she happened to be a widow as well, was dead and being carried in a coffin, all right? That's the word there. Uh, uh, I, I guess it's buyer or, or, or whatever, uh, bear maybe, I don't know. I before E except after C, but anyway. Uh, much of the people there uh, were also, of the city were there with this woman. And many people think, well, why would much of the city be there for this woman? Back in the Bible days when a widow uh, had to, uh, you know, when she lost uh, her, her husband and, and she did not have any children or anything, the city took over. the The city took care of the uh, of the of the lady and made sure she was taken care of and that sort of thing. This was done many times through the church and things, uh, and, and and such. So the city people were responsible and such. So they were there to support her. They were there to help her and such. So much of the people were there uh, of the city with this woman. Jesus, seeing her, has compassion on her, and and uh, and says to her, "Weep not." He stops. What he's doing and says to her, weep not. He then touches the coffin and says, young man, I say unto thee, arise. Now the young man that was dead sat up and began to speak. Jesus then delivers him to his mother. Now because of this great miracle, because of this miracle, a fear, the Bible says, came upon all and they glorified God saying, that a great prophet is risen among us and that God hath visited his people. Now, if you would, verse number 17, which is our text, says this. And this rumor, now what rumor is they talking about? The rumor found in verse number 16. Now that rumor means uh, a fame or report, this report or this fame uh, as such. What was that? That a great prophet has risen among us and that God hath visited his people. So this rumor then of him, of Christ, went forth. The Bible says throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about. Now, and you think about that and many times we just kind of pass over this uh, and such. But uh, you got to understand something here uh, in, in things. Nain was a small city 
located not far from Capernaum. All right, just a small city. Jesus does this great miracle in this small town and a rumor or report of Jesus as being the great prophet and that God had visited his people started spreading around this small town. This rumor of Jesus then spreads throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about. All right. Now think about that for a minute. Think about what, how, how this is done. All it took was one miracle by Christ to convince a small town God had visited them. And out of that excitement spread the news throughout the whole region. Think about it. Think about it with me. This rumor was spread throughout the region without Facebook. Wow. They didn't have somebody taking a picture on their iPhone and, 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 and uh, posting on Facebook and saying, I've, I'm with Jesus. You know, they didn't have that spreading around uh, and such. This rumor was spread around without the help of Fox News. Wow, that's hard to believe, isn't it? We didn't, they didn't have the 24-hour news cycle. They didn't have Fox News and CNN and all those other things. This news was spread about without the help of them. This news was spread about without the help of YouTube videos. Wow. Yeah. This news started in a small town with the, uh, 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 the people of the town and then spread throughout the town, which spread throughout Judea, which spread throughout the whole region, was spread from here all the way throughout the whole region by word of mouth. Think about that. That's a lot of gossip, isn't it? And that's a lot of gossiping. That's a lot of talking. That's a lot of saying. That's a lot of people talking about things. This morning, I have said all this to get you to think about this. Things are going to be rumored about everybody in every church today. Yeah, I don't care what... Uh, you know, it's amazing. You go out knocking on doors or you meet people and stuff and, and, and uh, you tell them where you're from and some of them will say, oh yeah, I heard about that church. You're the church that, and they say something that ain't even anywhere close to being, being correct. I mean, it's, it's, it's out there. You're always going to have things and rumors spread about you that aren't true, uh, whether it's the church or yourself or whatever. It's always going to, there's always going to happen. All right. And uh, unfortunately so. However, if I have a preference as to what is rumored about me or this church, I would want it to be that God is with me or God has visited Victory Baptist Church. That's what I want. I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't so much care about, wow, the church is running 100 or 200 or 300 or 400 or 500. I don't so much care about that. I don't so much care about, wow, their buildings are, are immaculate. Uh, their building is just, they got the nicest building in town. Or I don't so much care about, uh, about that sort of thing. I would, if I had any rumor that I wanted to be spread about us or here at Victory Baptist Church, is that God is with Victory Baptist Church. That's what I want. That's what I would want that spread about and such. Why can't we be the vehicle God uses in this little city of Macomb, Illinois to spread the report that God has visited us? Why can't we be that vehicle here at Victory Baptist Church? Why can't we do that to a point where it spreads throughout Macomb and then throughout McDonough County and then throughout Hancock County and then throughout Henderson County, then throughout Schuyler County, throughout Fulton County, then throughout all of Illinois, throughout all of Missouri, throughout all of Iowa, and throughout all the world. Why can't we be that vehicle? Think about it with me for a minute. Think about it. All it took was one miracle performed on one man. That's all it took. That's all it took. 
Now, why can't something like that happen today? What would stop God from doing a miracle today? Why can't something happen in some person today that would cause the, 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 the city of Macomb to, to spread about that God is with Victory Baptist Church? Did you see, did you hear what happened there? God is with them. Why couldn't that happen and then spread to, to, uh, uh, to uh, 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 all the neighboring towns and the neighboring counties and, and, uh, and then throughout the state and the other states? Why couldn't that happen today? Why can't we be the vehicle God uses to do a miracle in one's man, one man's life? To see, uh, for others to see, and uh, thus a city turn back to God. And then once that city turns back to God, see that revival spread throughout the region and the world. Why can't that happen? Why can't that happen? Look, I happen to believe that God's still in the miracle working business. I believe it. I don't believe that these disciples and such have any less, have any more power than what we as Christians have available to us today. I don't believe that they were any, any more special and such than what we are. I believe that God could give us the same power and has, we have available the same power as what these apostles and these disciples had during the, the, the days of the Bible. I believe it. I believe that, that those, those things can still happen. I believe it. I don't believe that Jesus is saying no more miracles. No more miracles. I don't believe it. I believe God is still in the miracle working business. I happen to believe that Jesus still wants to work through us. I happen to believe that. I still happen to believe that the Lord wants to work through us, uh, uh, imperfect people, to show a perfect God to an imperfect world. I believe that. I believe that God still wants to work through us. I believe that God wants to do these things and so that we can manifest Him, Him through us. I still happen to believe that we at Victor Baptist Church can be the spark that lights a fire for God that will go throughout the whole world. I believe it. We're just in Macomb, just a little city in Macomb, a little city in the whole world. Well, Nain was a little city, little town. And they don't have all the all the uh, the media ability that we have today. It happened there. Why can't it happen here? Sometimes we get this idea that we're in this little podunk town, this little out in the middle of cornfields, which we are out in the middle of a cornfield, out in the middle of a cornfield. And, you know, God will work and so blah, blah, blah. But we cannot be an influence on the entire world. Where do we get that? We got to get out of that mentality. We got to get out of that mentality and say, you know what? Uh, we here at Victory Baptist Church, we can, through God's help, change the world for him. Just like uh, it happened in Nahum, Nahum, it can happen in the little city of Macomb, Illinois. It can happen. It can happen. So what does it take for a miracle like that to happen? What does it take for a miracle like what happened here with uh, when Jesus raised this boy from the dead, this young man? What does it take? Well, if you look at verse number 13. Verse number 12 says, Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, Behold, there was a dead man carried out the only son of his mother. And she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. And look at this. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. Compassion. Compassion. If we want to see God do great work here and great miracles to others, we need to have that compassion for others. 
compassion, and enough compassion to stop what we're doing and help those that come nigh us to see Christ in us and how we treat them. Jesus was, was going through the city and these people came nigh him. Jesus, because of his compassion, stopped what he was doing and healed the young man. We need to have that kind of compassion on others. We need to have the compassion enough to say, you know what? Busy or no busy, God has brought in my way. I'm going to stop and show them the love of Christ. I'm going to stop and show them that God is real. I'm going to stop and show them that God still works miracles. What is Jude saying in verses 22 and 23? Bible says, and of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Compassion. If you want to see God work at Victory Baptist Church and change the world upside down, we need people with passion. Enough compassion to stop what we're doing when they come nigh. And invest in them. All it takes is someone to have enough compassion on a Damon Foster. As he comes nigh to stop and our busy schedule and stop what we're doing and point him to Christ. Salvage a life for the Lord. All it takes is having enough compassion on one lost sinner. As, he come, as, as, as we come nigh, he comes nigh to us. And for us to stop and point him to Christ. But not just for salvation. But invest in him. Invest time in him. Teaching him and showing him the love of Christ. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. To have enough compassion... To stop what we're doing. And some come die. And show them Christ. I wonder how many people. We, that come nigh to us. That maybe God has wanted us to stop and talk to. But because we get so busy. And because we get so wrapped up in, in our things and such. And the reason why we've done that is we've lost the compassion for others. We've lost that. Because we've gotten wrapped up in our stuff. But we're not on this earth for us. Look. Think about it. Just one miracle. Done in the name of Christ. Can change a family. Which can change a neighborhood. Which can change a city. Which can change a region. Which can change a nation. Which can change a world for Christ. Just one. We don't have to take and, 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 and uh, uh, you know, and, and, and have uh, the biggest, you know, the most in attendance in, 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 to, in order to make a difference here in Macomb, Illinois. We don't have to have the, the nicest building, church building, in order to make a difference in Macomb, Illinois. We don't have to take and, 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 and uh, 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 you know, have uh, the most money uh, uh, or uh, influential people coming to the church in order to make a difference in Macomb, Illinois. We don't have to have that. We want to make a difference for God. You want to make a difference and change uh, Macomb, Illinois, and change a nation and change a world? If we, we can do that here at Victory Baptist Church, we can start it right here, right now, right today. If we would just stop and start having that compassion on others, have that compassion enough that when we see them, we stop and give them and show them the love of Christ. There are many people out there today that are hurting. There are many people out there today, even in Macomb, Illinois, that are searching. 
They're needing a miracle. They're needing a miracle that only they could get from God. And if we want to take and change the comb and change the area and change the region and change the world, we can do it if we'll just stop. Have enough compassion to see these folks and stop. And show them Christ. Invest in them. Invest in them. Take some time. Invest in them. Show them there is an answer. Show them that God is in the miracle working business. Show them that, that, that God will answer prayer. That God does do miracles today. That God can help them. That they can see and have that wonderful peace. That passeth all understanding. Show them. The answer is not through the drugs. The answer is not through uh, the alcohol. The answer is not through all those things. The answer is through Jesus Christ. Just one. Think about it. One person. One miracle done by God in this city. One lost person saved. One person that's saved and, and, and taken out of the, the sin of, of the alcoholism and, and such. One person is enough to change the city of Macomb for God. To get people talking, saying, you know what? God is with that church. God is with that person. God is with them. And I want what they've got. Because I want God. And it could change a city like Macomb. It can change then a county like Madonna County. And then Skyler and Fulton and the whole region around. One. One Damon Foster could do it. I'm telling you, it, 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 look, uh, you know, we, we don't think, you know, with Damon, Damon, Damon had a rough, had a rough, rough, rough road. And many of you have no clue uh, uh, in such, but you know, you really, Damon, know, there's a lot of people know Damon Foster because of his, his parents. And if he could get his life straightened around and like he's doing right now and come back here a changed man because of God. You know what God could do with that? You know how many folks could be uh, folks that, could, that can be saved that would listen to Damon that would not uh, listen to me or you? But there's a lot of demons out there here in Macomb. There's a lot of demons. There's a lot of people hurting and needing a miracle here in Macomb. <laughs> that miracle they need is Christ. It can happen here. There's no reason why we can't be the catalyst that starts a, a revival that turns America back to him. There's no reason why. We're just a little church. Ain't no such thing as little in God's eyes. We're preaching and teaching the gospel. Look. Let me ask you a question. Think about this. Based on your life in 2015. Just re reflect 2015. What is being rumored or reported about you? What is it? If you could just be a little little uh, a mouse or whatever and go in areas where maybe your neighborhood or and go go and sneak into the neighbor's house and listen for a little bit and what are they saying about you? If you could just be a little mouse and 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 and, and go into uh, your workplace around those that you work with. And listen to them when, when you're not around and they know that you can't hear. <clears throat> What's being reported about you? What's being reported? 
from what you've done in 2015, this is it, folks. This is, this is the last, we're not going to have a full week. We've got five more days, basically. Four more days. And that's it of 2015. What is being rumored about you of what you've done in 2015? Think about it. As a church, as a church, what is being rumored about us here in Macomb? And I'm, I'm, look, I know there are people, there are going to be false things said. I, I understand that. But the truth of the matter is, our goal ought to be the thing rumored about Victory Baptist Church is, you know, God's working in that place. God's working in that place. They're being used by God in that place. I remember my uh, cousin, um, he, he had married one of the cousins that I, that I grew up with and such that was very, very, uh, it's one of, the, one of my two cousins I was very close to that I would go to, uh, hunting and stuff on Sundays and, and such and and when I got saved, he, him, him and my other cousin said, you know what, I'll give him a year. Uh, and he'll be back with us and that sort of thing. I remember it, it, we'd been at Calvary for, for quite some time and, and uh, uh, in, in things and married and kids and such. I remember once, one, uh, one Sunday, my, his, the, my cousin's wife come to church. Whoa. I, was, I couldn't believe it. She come to church and she got saved, walked the aisle, got saved, got baptized, and she when she when they when she came back out, she said, "You know what? You know why I came today?" She said, "I'm going on a trip, on an airplane. I'm scared to death to go on an airplane. I'm scared to death that I'm going to die." And she said, "I know, and I knew that this church was a getting saved church in this town." And that's why I came today. Because I wanted to be saved and I knew where to go. Now think about that for a minute, folks. Wouldn't that be a better rumor passed around than, 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 than some of the other ugly things that get passed around? Wouldn't that be a better rumor? I mean, if they're going to tell rumors about us, why not, why not spread some make, some, make sure they got some good things to talk about? About Victory Baptist Church. Why can't Victory Baptist Church be the get and save place in Macomb, Illinois? Well, if you want to know you're going to heaven when you die, you don't know. You want to know. You go to Victory Baptist Church. I don't care any service, whenever. You go there and you can find out how you can go to heaven when you die. Why can't that be? Why can't it be? What is rumored about us here at Victor Baptist Church? What is it? You realize that we can take and be the vehicle that starts a revival? Or we can be a vehicle that hinders revival? Think about it. What are we here at Victor Baptist Church? Are we hindering? Or are we going to be one that's going to start the revival? Look, we live in a busy, busy, busy time. No doubt in my mind. We live in that. Unfortunately, Satan has done this to us. And what he does is he gets us so wrapped up, so busy doing this and busy doing that and busy doing this and busy doing this. And busy with this, and busy with this, and busy with this, and busy with this. He gets us so wrapped up in those things. People come nigh us that God brings our way. That's looking for that miracle. That's looking for that Christ. And they come nigh our way. And many times because we're so wrapped up in all these other things. We've lost that compassion for others. And we don't stop. Because we don't have that compassion. We don't stop. To show them. Jesus Christ. I wonder how many in Macomb 
this last year that God took our way as a church, our church people, and passed our way. And because we'd gotten so busy, we didn't stop. It all starts with compassion. Compassion. Look, let's do what we need to do in 2016. To start the rumor that God is with us at Victory Baptist Church. Let's start that rumor this year. Let's start it. Let's do something for God enough to a point where some, where people look at that and say, wow, God is with them. God is with that church. Let's do what we need to do. But it's going to start with compassion. In order for Victor Baptist Church to do that, that rumor is going to start with you, each person at Victor Baptist Church. Each of you. It starts with you. If everybody in here would take that responsibility and say, I am going to make a difference for God in somebody's life. And you focus on that. And you take and get the compassion that is there in you because you're saved. It's there. The love of Christ is in you. It's there. The compassion that Christ had uh, and showed is in you. It's there because he is in you. You have that in you. Our problem is We've lost focus. We've gotten so busy on these other things. And we somehow we've got to get that compassion back. Start seeing souls of people instead of people. And when someone comes nigh, God speaks to your heart. Show compassion enough to stop what you're doing. And show them Christ. Let's make a difference. Let's change. I don't know what all they're saying about Victor Baptist Church. But I do know what I want them to say. About us in 2016. God is with that church. But they're not going to say it. Unless he's with us. We make that difference. In somebody. It only takes one miracle folks. Only one. Let's do our part. What are they saying about you? Let's pray. Lord, please, I pray you just bless. Lord, I pray you help us, Lord, as we enter into 2016. Lord, as we look back this last year, we look back at our life, and even here at the church, and what we've done here for you. And Lord, I can't help but believe that we've passed up many opportunities that you've brought people nigh us that we've just passed up because we've gotten so busy in other things we failed to have that compassion on others that we didn't stop and show them the love of Christ many left with not having that miracle done in their life Lord please help us Help us, Lord, please, to stay focused this next year on you and your work and your and your what you want us to be for you. Help us to keep that the main thing. Help us to get that compassion for others like you have. Help us to find that in us. Please, God, help us. Help us, Lord, please, to be the vehicle here in Macomb, Illinois. I could change this country, this world around for you. Please, Lord, bless, I pray.